Welcome back to the Bible Library. Uh, we're entering into some interesting books, shall we say. Uh, we've kind of hit the epistles that everyone loves to quote and maybe know uh, more fully, and now we're entering the epistles that are maybe lesser-known treasures of the church. We begin, though, with 1 Timothy. This is still Paul writing. We will get the epistles that Paul didn't write. You can tell he's very prolific. I mentioned he was a smart guy. Uh, he's writing Tim Timothy. Who is Timothy he's writing to? Um, Timothy is his basically adopted son. Uh, they've been on m mission trips or uh, planting churches together. Um, they've been through a lot. We're going to talk a little bit in the book of Acts. <clears throat> and and they have this relationship. Um, like I said, this, this father-son dynamic. And, um, you know, they aren't blood-related. And uh, he, he's, Paul is writing to, to Timothy, kind of. Or maybe you could even look at me, and if I were son, you can look at it kind of like um, Master and Apprentice. You know, Jedi, Jedi and Padawan. Or Sith Lord and Sith Apprentice. Anyway, um, <clears throat> should I get Star Wars in here as often as possible? Can you tell? The, uh, Paul's writing, hey, you know what? Timothy is, is, is working on the church in Ephesus, as we heard in Acts. And... Paul's writing, all right, Timothy, this is kind of like his, his first call, uh, how to be a leader, and, and share this for your congregation, how to, be a, how to be a church, how to work together. This is a very pastoral epistle in that um, it, it's instructions of, of how to be the church together, not just the church being the pastor, not just the church being the people, but together. Um, I, I would say that we have some funny passages in here too. There's even things concerning bishops and 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 clergy. And <clears throat> I do enjoy. If you do choose to read this, that chapter is very funny. Um, what Paul envisions bishops should and should not do, or pastors should and should not do. Love to hear your feedback on that. But anyway, I would say that this theme is um, making sure that your people have sound doctrine. Kind of in the background of, of both Timothy's and a lot of these epistles, this idea of false teachings. There's bad theology out there. And Paul names that quite a bit, that there are people who don't understand the Hebrew Scriptures that have kind of gone off on it and done their own thing. There's um, people who preach the prosperity gospel. Perhaps, again, we can relate to this understanding that have cheapened the understanding of faith and the idea of sacrificial love, not a get-rich scheme, the church being Zach, get off the soapbox. Um, <clears throat> there's bad theology out there. So Paul wants to make clear that we are doing uh, right teaching, right doctrine uh, that, that should be proclaimed by you and by your congregation, Timothy. So why would you read this letter? It's uh, six chapters, not, not the longest, um, but I think it's good advice if you're looking into uh, collaborative leadership in the church. Some amazing quotes that are worth wrestling with. And really, I think, get us to, clearly this was Paul saying, this is what the church should be then. It ha begs us to ask the question, what should the church be now? What does clergy look like now? What do uh, leaders in the church look like now? Our council, our, our ministry chairs, our people uh, sit in the pews or at home right now, right? Uh, what, do, what are we supposed to be doing? I think this is a book that'll that'll ask those questions. It's a conversation starter in that way. So this is also another sequel. So we will do part two tomorrow.